After playing Dragon Quest XI for a million and a half times across many different systems, you start to notice lots of weird and dumb things about the story and gameplay mechanics that don't make any sense and are outright baffling. It's a fun game, but oftentimes there will be little things here and there that probably weren't thought out too well and I think it's time to talk about them. Today I'm going to be going over 5 dumb things about Dragon Quest XI. In Dragon Quest XI, you'll often be asked a question by one of the various characters. Look, I'm worried about the half-wit prince getting himself killed. Can I come with you or not? And oftentimes, you'll have one of two dialogue options to respond with. Yes and no. It's already a little bit ridiculous that the Luminary only seems to have the mental capacity to answer simple yes or no questions, while silent protagonists in many other games have unique dialogue options, but as a further blow, the Luminary's answers to pretty much all these questions don't even matter. Yeah, Dragon Quest XI has a bad habit of having characters ask you questions during dialogue, only for it to not matter whether or not you say yes or no. Saying no to a particular question doesn't change the story or how characters perceive you. Even if you refuse to outright help every person who asks you for assistance, your friends still see you as a pure, wholesome being. Saying no usually results in characters just repeating themselves over and over again until you say yes, which makes me think, why are you even asking me a question if you will only accept one specific answer? It's honestly a bit silly that we're in the current day and still doing this. It's never been that amusing seeing characters do this when we have games out there where dialogue options matter and change the world around you. Maybe Dragon Quest XII might change this. Although it's a relatively linear journey, Dragon Quest XI does have one choice players can make. The choice to get married. Or be roommates, depending on your interpretation. Yeah, you can choose any of the seven party members to live with in the game, plus Gemma, the least popular choice. Marriage systems are becoming increasingly common in RPGs these days because, in video games, people enjoy living fantasies they can't experience in real life. But what's most ridiculous is how the team behind the game made possibly the worst marriage system I've ever seen. Like, I thought Skyrim's marriage system was bad, where you wear a necklace and everyone in a 10 mile radius wants to marry you, but in Dragon Quest XI, you have to go to another realm and fight a super boss within a certain amount of turns, then Drustin will give you the choice to make a wish. You have a choice for your wish from a list, which includes getting a powerful weapon, a dirty magazine, and you can wish to get married. Yeah, forget about talking to a character and getting to know them, no, you have to ask a muscular glowing man to just make it so that you're married to a certain character and when you get home, they're just there waiting for you like it's all natural. The Luminary must be very unattractive if he has to go through all of this just to get married I have to say. The Luminary has a lot of powers and most of them are wildly inconsistent and don't make sense in the game's story half the time. I mean there's a huge part of the game where he loses his powers but they somehow still work when it's convenient, which I still don't understand. But the weirdest part is when the Luminary somehow travels back in time at an early part in the game and not only meets his younger self who isn't a mute, but also talks to his adoptive grandfather. First of all, this is the only time the Luminary shows that he can travel in time by himself with no help, and he doesn't do it again. It's just weird that this is one of his powers and he somehow only used them once and just forgot about it afterwards. And it was not just a flashback, like all the other times he uses his powers in the game. He actually time traveled and changed the future. You know this because you find a letter from your grandfather acknowledging that he met you when you went back in time, and how he regrets telling you to visit Carnelian because he gets you arrested. So, if he regrets telling you that, then why didn't he warn you in the past? I mean, clearly the Luminary altered time, so doesn't that mean he could have just prevented himself from being jailed at the beginning of the game? It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. This weird time jump has no logic or explanation. This is one of the many, many plot holes in the game that was just conveniently not explained, but probably the most baffling one and it still bugs me. When the Luminary goes to Galopolis, he finds a cowardly prince named Faris who wants him to trade places with him to win a horse race so that he won't shame himself in front of his people because he can't ride a horse. The plan involves a Luminary wearing his armor and entering the horse race to hopefully win it. Well, as it turns out, if you completely fail the horse race and get in the last place, the game still goes on like normal and everyone goes on about how great you were at riding. Almost like you won. So it's like it doesn't matter how well you do because everyone is going to be happy with you regardless. Even Prince Ferris has no problem with you completely blowing it. So basically, the entire horse race was pointless because 
I guess as long as you did it, everyone is happy. Honestly, this is dumb. The game was being too forgiving here, and it doesn't make sense. Prince Ferris should be ashamed of you for losing. He shouldn't be happy. This whole thing was just a royal waste of time. My last dumb thing I want to talk about today is something I thought was really dumb the first time I played the game. When the party goes to Octagonia for the Mass Martial Arts Tournament, the Luminary gets paired up with Vince Vanquish, the reigning champion. Well, as it turns out, old Vince was actually juicing up with some super steroids that he was getting in exchange for kidnapping and feeding a bunch of the strongest fighters to a giant spider hidden in a cave under the city. Yeah, the dude is legit feeding people to a giant spider and the game tries to justify it by making it seem like he was doing it to raise money for the orphanage or some shit. I'm sorry, but how am I supposed to be okay with that? He's committing attempted murder and kidnapping and his means are supposed to justify this? And nobody cares after he basically apologizes at the end. Nobody acknowledges what he did. They just let him get off scot-free. He was feeding people to a giant spider. He didn't care about what he was doing until he got his ass whooped. And then he has the whole crowd cheering for him? Like, shouldn't he be in jail or something? Am I going crazy here for thinking this? What is wrong with these people? Sometimes this game takes its themes about forgiveness a little too far. So yeah, those were some dumb things about Dragon Quest XI. It's a good game with a lot of dumb stuff going on, and this doesn't even scratch the surface. So if you want to hear me talk about more dumb stuff about Dragon Quest XI in the future, let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate the feedback. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.